Welcome to the world of Ragnarok Mobile Adventure. Let's get ourselves straight to level 25. Why do I want to hit level 25? This opens up the rest of the daily, weekly, event content, and of course, the gacha. This will greatly enhance your enjoyment of the game from the very beginning. So let's focus on how to get there ASAP for the start of your ROM journey. I was able to get there in only an hour of playtime. Think you can beat me? I will also offer some veteran advice and tips along the way. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask in the comments. Let's go get started. Choose your desired server from your region and let's create a character. Feel free to use the links in the description box or the pinned comment of the video to download the game in your region if you haven't already. You may now choose your hairstyle, hair color, and eyes. These can be changed later through NPCs within cities with Zenny and Die Stuffs and with even further options. So don't worry, and just pick how you'd like to start out. Now you decide between Human and Dorum. The main difference is that Dorums count as a job class that you are locked into called the Spirit Whisper. So only choose this path if you plan to stick with Dorum for a while. Everyone begins in South Gate at level 1. Every character has a base level and a job level. The main difference is that your job level is linked to your current job class. In Ragnarok Mobile, you do have the ability to multi-job, which means that you can swap and work on different job classes on the same main character. They retain their own progress. So you are not locked down to one job class in this MMO, and you may use different ones for different situations or content. Speak to your bestie Senia, and let's apply to Eden Team together, which will include completing three trials. The first trial is offered by Poi just down the path. We can learn about using the minimap to see quest markers that will help us out in the future. You will get a starter weapon, so be sure to equip it. Poi will teach us about combat. We can click on the quest and it will help us auto-target the monsters for us too. Now we will help collect some flowers, which we can also click on the quest to move to the quest area and auto-pick up quest items for us. Be sure to remember this trick as we move around Midgard. Poi is part of our progress and gives us some potions, but Sunny's instincts warn us of something more sinister. Use the skill Thump to help us defeat this larger threat. After passing with perfect scores, we are greeted by some other Eden team members, Gina and Tony. For passing our trial, we are offered the choice of two headwear blueprints, Rookie Eggshell or Pink Boring. You could choose either one for looks in this case, as their stats are identical, and you will be gifted the blueprint. We will now craft the blueprint right from our bags, click on it, and hit craft. You will now have credit and able to equip this hat. We next head over to Examiner Banny, which the map shows they're just around the corner. Start out the trial by defeating some angry lunatics. He now teaches us a new trick in case we find ourselves in sticky situations. The play dead skill. Use it versus lubies when being attacked. Something's happened to lubies, but Banny has off to find them and gives us our perfect scores before leaving. Gina and Tony show up once more to offer us one of two pieces of headwear. We could choose between maple mirror and ribbon. I would suggest the ribbon because of the six magic attack deposit. Maple mirror can be obtained easily with currency later on. Head back to the camp and learn about attributes from Vivine. You can access your attributes by tapping your character portrait. Then your stats will be on the right hand side. You can manually distribute these points or you can click on builds and allow the game to apply the suggested stat build for you. Remember to hit save when you want to apply any changes. Now Senya and friends will share a little about combat time and restoring it. Every day a set amount of combat time is restored. 300 combat time until level 160 when it becomes 450 a day. You can accumulate extra combat time daily, however, by listening to music. Senia will show you where the music box in Southgate is located, but there is also a music box located in Prentera, Lasagna, and even your guild hall. Usually, the Prentera music box will be the busiest one where others might be playing music and listening together. You can hang out with friends and chat while waiting. One real-time minute of music restores three minutes of combat time, up to 90 minutes daily. This means it takes 30 minutes of real time to accumulate. You can start your daily routine with this extra combat time. Remember that extra time will not carry over to the following day, unlike regular leftover combat time. Sayrin will now begin your final trial, escorting a pet. You are now tasked to walk it along the path to its destination. 
Along the way, the game will teach us about auto combat, where you can select which monsters to target specifically when fighting. Continue using auto combat along the designated quest path, taking note of which monsters you should be targeting. The game will also hand you another adventure skill called First Aid to utilize. Finish your escort quest and hand over the Baffo Jr. to the pet merchant. Tony and Gina are here for another set of headwear to choose from, the green feeler or the bunny band. I would suggest the bunny band because this offers a six attack deposit. Something strange happens to the Baffo Jr. and next we learn how to set up auto potion. Under the auto combat settings, click on the cogwheel. Click to activate auto potion and then click fast add so the potions we earned through our trials so far will be added. Later on, you could fill this up with better potions from the item shop. It's our job to stop this Rioni from attacking the city. Head towards it and begin the battle by using the ability button that shows up in the bottom right. Once we get closer, pourings will spawn to protect Rioni. Take out these pourings first. After the awesome cutscene, defeat the pourings again and then lure Frioni to the center where the lightning is. This brings down its barrier. Hit it while this barrier is down and defeat the pourings and lure back to the center as long as you need to. After the battle and dialogue, you will be rewarded with a temporary mount. Choose whichever one you prefer visually. Moi Moi is the pouring and Lily is the Peko Peko. This mount will tick down its timer and you have three days to utilize it. We can now speed along for the rest of our quest in the meanwhile. We could place this item on the item bar to quickly equip it on the go while traveling between quests. Hand in your test results and then take a short quiz. You should answer O oh to all three wholesome questions. Senya now says you're ready to head into Prantera. Before heading to the big city, take a final photo with all the friends that you have made in Southgate. You may also choose to speak more with Senia's friends and learn which job classes they all represent. Once you are done, speak with Vivine to take your group photo. You can have some fun learning the filters, experimenting, and taking photos with these characters while you're here. You now also have the camera option unlocked permanently to use for your handbook progress. When ready, speak with the guard and hand over your pass and enter the city. You can watch the animated cutscene if you'd like. Head to the fountain and then walk over to Senia. She will gift you some gacha tickets, which we'll be able to use after our goal of level 25. You'll begin noticing these latest quests start unlocking photo spots. These can be captured with your camera at any time. I would suggest getting used to utilizing the camera whenever you are in new maps and areas, especially when you see these blue camera spots. Taking photos of these spots will give bonus XP in your handbook to work up your adventure level. You can head back and do these at any time. Let's meet with the Kafra and learn about what she can help us with. Kafra are NPCs that you can find in the cities and out in the field who offer teleport, storage, and save options primarily. Head back to Senya and she will let us know that we're ready to hit up the Adventures All. We can now decide on our first job change. This is because we have maxed out our job level as a novice. When you max out your job level, you will receive job quests to continue upgrading into more powerful versions of your path. Let's head over there next and speak with Higgy Ease. There's an option here to trial out whatever job class you'd like to check out first. I want to say stop. Even if you know what you want to be, I want you to do this trial at least once. Trust me. Pick something like Super Novice and start the trial. Once you head inside, a multitude of achievements will start being unlocked. Congratulations! Because of how the trial mode works like a monster scroll, this will actually give you an HP boost which will help you very early on while leveling or grinding. Feel free to let them scroll through while you start the trial. The trial works like this. You defeat waves of pourings using the provided lineup of skills. You can test them out and get a feel for what's available for the job class. After the waves are done, you fight a more tankier deviling MVP. You can do this trial as much as you'd like with all the job classes to test out. I just highly suggest doing this at least once for the achievement boost. So which job class should you pick for the first time? As we mentioned at the start, we can multi-job in ROM, so don't be too afraid to play what you might like. Generally, players will try to choose a farming class to start out with and then swap to a main job class for PvP or PvE later on. You can unlock extra jobs with job vouchers or if you do not have one available, 88 BCC. There are a series of achievements that offer job vouchers for free in the endgame dungeons, so not to worry if you are a free-to-play player. I suggest playing what you like, but if you want to choose a farming class, most go with Archer or Merchant. I'll be going with an Acolyte for this character, which will be a full support saint in the long run. 
Once you decide on your first job, do the small trial and complete your job change ceremony. You can speak with the class trainer to leave when you're done as a little shortcut. Speak with Senia in the hall, who has chosen to become a beautiful swordsman. You will then get a job appropriate spirit weapon to equip. Now speak with Higgy Ease again to learn about skill points for the first time. Skill points are used to empower your job skills. Usually for a beginner, you'll want to focus on buff type skills and extra damage for farming and grinding. You can also drag these skills down to your combat bar to click on and to your auto bar for when you choose auto combat on a specific target. Higgy Ease now resets our attributes for our new job class. You can distribute th these manually or follow a suggested stat build by clicking builds and choosing the specialization you're going for. Hit confirm to save your changes. In this Ragnarok game, resetting stat or skill points just costs some zenny, and you can do this anytime. So don't fret if you're not happy with your current build later on you will not need to remake your character. Now we will be introduced to some game systems such as the Adventure Handbook, Adventure Levels, and Adventure Rank. Follow the quest markers and speak with Eric and Kakaro to learn about the basics. If you want more detailed info, I have the Scout Rank Up Guide available to watch at your convenience, which explains these a little better. Now with our handbook, we can save notes of our journey's progress and earn titles, achievements, and bonus stats along the way. You can choose to one tab activate to quickly activate progress across the tabs. Oh yeah, remember those achievements from the job trial? Now you got that huge base HP boost. Good job. If you happen to miss it on your main tune already, handbook progress is account wide. You could do the job trial in an old character, or use actual monster scrolls. Head back towards Eric, but we're paused by some strange sounds. Follow the ruckus to the back of the cathedral, and bravely take a step forward. Confronting the Baphomet, who is frightening everybody. Take him out and confront the Smokey. Choose to let go to continue the quest. Meet with the mystery man who introduces himself and offers to trade the card you earned for a usable one. Now we learn about unlocking stats from gathering cards in the game too. Finish up this quest by speaking with Eric. After this, we are then introduced to mercenary cats. These cats are located on the east side of Prantera. The quest asks us to speak only with Goro, but it's a great idea to speak with all of them to unlock them. Goro is a healer, Wasabi is a tank. Mesa is a magic dealer, and Poe is a DPS. They can join your party for most instances and for field combat and are a huge help. Goro and Wasabi are really essential in tough combat and can be used as extra help for challenges. Also, the first time you speak with them, they will join you for free for seven days. And they each hand over seven mercenary tickets, so you can get 14 days each for free. Otherwise, they cost any to hire on a daily basis. To make your mercenary cat stronger, a new daily will show up later which will earn you kitty coins to unlock their headwear to empower their skills. Also, when you have more than enough eating coins, you can also level their skills further. At this point, a lot of unlock key side quests have shown up in Prantera and some other side content. We can do most of these later, but I will get a few of these out of the way to make sure we have some quality of life in the early game. Let's get this enhancement one done. Enhancement is a permanent stat unlock on your equipment slots. You basically use Zenny to enhance each slot, no matter what you're wearing. This Zenny cannot be recovered. For early game, we can enhance our weapon and accessory slots to further our offensive stats. The other slots we can do further into endgame when we have extra Zenny to spare and need them for more endgame content. We will also make sure the storage function is unlocked at the Kafra. This allows you to store things away, and you can also deposit them when you are away from town anywhere, anytime. Let's also take a quick detour back to Southgate and unlock the pet system. Pets are essential to your progress and offer utility in the field. I have a detailed pet guide you can check out after the video at your convenience. Let's now talk to Senia back in Frontera City, and we will now further the main quest into Westgate. This next map is where we will complete our goal. Speak with Arslan, who gives us the lead to find Professor Spence. He is located in the top left corner of Westgate. 
Svens mentions about stopping something sinister, and then we meet with his first apprentice. We also unlock some more photoscenic areas that we can do now or later. His apprentice Austin mentions the Ymir heart. We then collect some dust from rockers and then defeat the berserk rocker. It mentions party suggested, but with our pets and cats alongside us, we are more than ready for this. We get some more lore about the Ymir heart and then speak again with Svens. Next, we will speak to another apprentice, Mabel, sitting under the tree shade. Help her pick bananas and then offer them to the yo-yos. Take the sitting spot of the yo-yo who exits and listen to her story about Demon King Barak. Follow up with Svens and now we will learn about the legend of Thanatos from Borger in the Garden. Revisit the memories cutscenes and then defeat the Minerus. A strange rift has opened. So we will next use the instance UI to enter the rift called Edgar's Roar and challenge it. While inside the rift, the voice of Thanatos will give us hints about the monsters that are upcoming in the waves. Whenever we defeat a phase of the rift, we have the option of picking one out of three buff cards before continuing. These are sometimes extra spells we can temporarily gain, extra stats, or utility. Depending on your job class will affect which ones you should choose. On the second wave, if you are a physical class, you could choose the Mystic Frozen to change the element of your attack. Or something like the Vadon card can work as an all-rounder. On the last wave, we can use the Fire Armor to be immune to fire attacks or some extra damage. I went with fire immunity, so I didn't have to worry about the special attacks as much. Defeat Edga and learn about their story. The Nados now hands you a gift as the one fated to restore balance. Now let's pick up our rewards and head out of this rift. Meet back with Borger and report in and head back to Sven's with the Ymir heart shard. Establish the bond and listen to the hints about the other seals. He further explains that the world has changed and now heart of moments have awakened in the monsters of the land. Be sure to speak with him again to fully unlock the heart's origin. This will be your first catch-up system, which will greatly help you progress as a new character. Spence has a little more information about the heart to share, and you now fully establish this bond and are given 100 hearts. We now learn how to infuse the heart with them by pressing down on this button. We can check in on the heart's levels to see what rewards will be shared with us next as we further progress. This new hat, Apple of Archer, was an upgrade for me and probably will be for you too. Remember when swapping headwear to deposit the old ones to gain their deposit stats. And you can also use them as costumes too now. Much better. Now that quest got us to over level 20. Let's pick up a deacon, which unlocks at level 20. You can always change this later, so just choose whomever you'd like for now. The deacon butler allows us access to shortcuts to all kinds of things, but especially the dailies. Now we want to complete mission boards. We could do them manually, but it's much quicker to do them instant. If I check my currency tab, I do happen to have 200 rice bowls available. We only need five per mission right now, so we have more than enough. Click the daily UI and mission boards. When choosing mission board quests, I like to prioritize meteor chains, belief tokens, mercenary tickets as the rewards in the early game. I suggest doing the same. Let's complete our first three, which is the max for the day. And now we did it. We're now level 25. If for any reason you're not 25 here at this point, I suggest heading over to the willows in the bottom right of Westgate and bullying them here for a while until you hit 25. Or you could just continue the quest. Now that you're 25, the world of Midgard has expanded and opened to you. You have access to the daily and monthly event quest, special login bonuses, novice bonuses and rewards for your first time playing on the server. And of course, your first time rolling on the gacha and for free. Remember, everyone is able to roll on the gacha machines for a zero BCC roll every time it rotates. So you can jump right into the fun right away and earn some sweet looking headwear or goodies. Whether you're on a new server or a seasoned server, you still have access to similar bonus events and rewards. Click out the novice adventure log, which will give you tasks to complete for a limited amount of time. The sign in bonus, which offers headwear and a free costume on day seven. The regular adventure log, access to the store and so much more. Now, what should you do next? 
Now you can farm or continue the main quest if you'd like. I chose to do some grinding before continuing the quest myself. You do have the mount available for some time to take advantage of moving around and speeding up travel for it for questing. But there is also another limited time mount that you can also pick up to make things easier the next time you want to speed through your quest too. With your heart's origin, you do want hearts a moment, which you can get from rifts, dailies, and farming too. There is so much to work on next. This is only the beginning. What job class did you pick to start your journey? What would you like to explore next? I'd love to know more about how you're enjoying ROM and what could help you. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Any questions about the early game and I'll do my best to help. Hit the like and subscribe button if you got to level 25 today. Were you able to get there in an hour like me? Or did you beat my timing? Be sure to learn more about the other game systems like Adventure Ranks and Pets and the following suggested videos I have linked up for you. I can't wait to see you in game. Until next time, adventure. Let's guard the eternal love together.